Obviously, we are all aware of the recent wave of crime that we have experienced in our metro campuses over the past few months. And as we'll hear, this isn't actually a new phenomenon, that unfortunately our metro higher ed institutions have had to deal with this issue for years. Students fall prey to those with criminal intent. They recognize that students on campuses are often unsuspecting and more often than not carrying expensive items such as laptops and iPhones. What is new, however, and deeply disturbing is the boldness with which criminals are carrying out these acts. So some of the common denominators uh, for the victims, um, and it, this is not victim blaming, but the victim can do so much to stop some of these uh, incidences from happening. A lot of times there's alcohol use involved. Uh, they're walking along uh, uh, sidewalks and alleys, uh, very dark areas, uh, late at night or early in the morning. And the loss of these cell phones then occur during that time. So we're working very hard at the second precinct, and in fact, all of our precincts, to educate everyone on how to stay safe. Walk in groups. Try not to you know, have so much alcohol on board. Uh, walk in lighted areas. Don't walk in these dark alleys at night. Uh, call someone, let them know that you're leaving and when you will arrive. We are working on our campus to, to finish converting building access from a manual process of locking and locking some of the remaining doors to an electronic access and expect to have that completed by the end of the school year with an investment of $1.5 million. We're also analyzing where more cameras in public spaces would be warranted and where we can improve lighting and landscaping to create safer environments. We have a lot of lighting on campus. Some lighting is more effective than others, and there are still some spots where we think we can add more. We are a public institution with a public outreach mission, and we know that we need to uh, be uh, safe and accessible 24-7 for our students in our community. We do work hard together on mutual public safety objectives, and, and nothing illustrates that more than this fall, there were, including the three the two sexual assaults and the attempted abduction, there were a total of 28 violent crimes in the three fall months. Of those, only three were on campus, but you know, over 50% of the victims were students, so the mutual interest uh, goes without saying, I would hope. Uh, so we've got a great relationship with MPD, and I don't expect that's ever gonna waver. I would say in our campus master plan, one of our policies uh, and guiding principles is around creating a safe environment, and so it is consistent with the work we do on a year-to-year, -year, frank, frankly, day-to-day -day basis as we look at introducing projects. We think about access points, lighting, circulation. Um, we are doing a concerted effort right now to really look at our lighting and landscaping on campus, and we've also reached out to our, our colleagues and partners at the City of Minneapolis, at the Department of Public Works, and the Minneapolis Police Department as well to help us evaluate around the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, one of the challenges that we have is not all of the property that is perceived to be on the university campus is actually owned by the university. A case in point would be um, uh, fraternities and sororities along University Avenue that's actually privately owned property and the lights are municipal and so we really need to do this effectively to do it in partnership with uh, the city of Minneapolis and um, it will be challenging in those neighborhoods because there is no special assessment district or service district that could move more expeditiously about funding improvements so we, we have an open question about that. There are 1,700 cameras on the Twin Cities campus. That's been an active project going back 12 years to the days of attacks on research you may recall that happened on campus. So we've buttoned up a lot of the buildings, the entrances, the residence halls. Uh, we were lacking to some degree in the public areas. So we've, uh, among the three task forces my last commission, one was when I'm chairing to look at our public area surveillance and we've uh, uh, met and drafted a plan to uh, do just that, to kind of develop a perimeter plan which will, will mesh with the city. For example, Cedar Riverside, they've got six public cameras on Cedar, Augsburg, so we'd like to kind of knit the whole area to get the business community in Dinky Town Stadium Village, so uh, establish, get a good perimeter coverage and then those um, formal and informal thoroughfares on and off campus. And certainly the light rail, we really don't have, we don't have surveillance on Washington Avenue now, but transit will have cameras on the platforms and we'll want to be able to observe the comings and goings from campus from that point. And as a student just walking around campus, 
um, it's easy to notice some things that we could be doing better. In particular, the most obvious thing is, is lighting. Um, the areas where the most crime is happening are not well-lit areas in the neighborhoods of Dinkytown or Marcy Homes or, or, or Como. And so I'd look forward to strategies that the university and the city um, can take on together to make those areas more well-lit. Um, we also understand that cameras can be an effective crime deterrent. We have a lot on campus, but I, I think those off-campus neighborhoods that I mentioned would be areas where we could see more of that. Um, you know, and has been, has been talked about quite a bit at this hearing already, an evaluation of, you know, where we need patrols and officers given the changing um, physical environment of our campus is something that really needs to be done. On November 24th, um, it was about between 3 and 3.30 a.m., I'm doing a round of the fraternity house, turning off lights as I'm about to go to bed, and I see some activity happening on our lawn. So I grab a hammer, which I'm the house manager, so I have tools laying around the house, and I grab my hammer, go outside, and proceed to see what's happening, and I see two people what looked like to be about to mark a student, and yell, hold on my phone, so I'm calling the police. Two of the two guys fled away towards the university, and the girl ran away, and I was able to gain more information. Just went back, like went back inside. It was a very weird incident, but that is just one example. I know my friends have almost gotten mugged. Um, like one happened in the spring, one happened a few weeks earlier, and they did not, but they because they were very smart and aware. But not everyone's so lucky. So some of the effects it's had on us is um, how people are walking. I know we have been changing our my routine, my routes. I've been staying inside. I'm not. I, did, I was going. The, currently, the library is open 24 hours. I was going to go there last night, but instead I decided to stay in, partially due to the cold and partially because I was probably leaving around 3.30, and that's not a good time to be leaving the library by yourself.